first off, and, and, and I know he's upstairs uh, working, but uh, I have to thank uh, Hunter Yurchek for giving me uh, the responsibility to, to, lead the game, uh, to lead the team uh, through the bowl game. I'm appreciative to, towards that. I know everybody wants to talk about the team. Um, obviously, Saturday was challenging. Um, but to have um, come back, we gave them off Sunday, came back on Monday, uh, had another uh, team meeting with everybody present. I'm very appreciative to the captains, uh, the juniors, the seniors. They did a tremendous job of uh, stabilizing our team. Uh, still have a little bit of work to do with the freshman class. Um, we'll be uh, monitoring them when everybody comes off the road. Um, but they've done a really nice job. Looking forward uh, to, the ch to the challenge. Um, I'll go through some of the staff changes. Obviously, there's quite a few. Myself, um, I will be uh, the same, same role as I've had before in terms of defensive coordinator and obviously manage the game. Uh, Major Applewhite will be the offensive coordinator. Craig Niver will take over <clears throat> the responsibilities uh, for the defensive backs and also do all the special teams. Uh, Roosevelt Majit will take over the defensive line. On the offensive side of the ball, James Casey will take over for the tight ends. Uh, Kenneth Pope is still here. Um, Darrell White is still at the receiver's position. And CJ Irvin will take over the offensive line. Dan Carroll will also help as part of the linebacker crew. So. Locked and loaded, I know that's going to be a question for you guys, uh, but we're moving forward. Our kids right now had a, a great lift this morning. The schedule was put together. Uh, we'll practice on Thursday for uh, the, the usual guys that I see after practice, Friday also, and then we'll have a get-together on Saturday where uh, we're inviting all of our committed uh, recruits uh, and plan on having a great meal with them in the afternoon. So with that, let's open up to questions. Todd. Todd, you've you're good. Uh, Todd, you've uh, expressed interest in the job. Just curious, where personally, being a head coach has been in your career ladder aspirations, and what do you feel like you're ready for at this at this point in your career? Uh, the, I think you get a certain point in your career where you, um, you there's a comfort level of everything that goes with every in and out of the program. And I believe that I'm at that point, uh, the, the comfort level with uh, the program itself and the ins and outs of offense, defense, special teams to go along with um, fundraising, things that probably when I was younger, when I was in my uh, early 30s, probably didn't think a lot about. Um, but now have been around the game and have been with some very successful people. So you get a chance to learn a lot. If you sit in a meeting and you keep your eyes open and your ears open, it's amazing what you can learn. Um, so I do feel a comfort level to go into it. I just want to express this too. Uh, I'll put this out there. Uh, myself and Major Applewhite will interview for the job. So I think it's important that uh, we do, do not exclude Major out of this process. Um, I have the interim tag, uh, and there's no animosity between myself and Major. Uh, we're here strictly to make sure that these kids are prepared uh, to go uh, win number 10. So what have the last 72 hours been like just for you personally trying to get everything together? Uh, a little bit chaos. Uh, I honestly like it, uh, to be very busy and have to go around uh, the people in this office that know me. I like to organize things. I like to try to stay ahead of things almost uh, to the point we're having three or four plans. So that part uh, I, I do like. Giving people new responsibilities, the one thing I am proud of, you know, there's been a, a lot of coaches that have moved forward. And we have uh, capable, young, youthful guys that I, I've seen them pick up their game in the office. It's been great to see. They're excited. They're, they're going out in the road recruiting. They're doing the things that they have to. And then I put a lot of pressure on our team itself and told them there's going to be, there's going to be times where you're going to have to step up. You've been trained um, by some of the best people in the country, and now it's time to show that training as we continue on the next couple of weeks. 
I'm sure there's been some, um, sorry, I'm behind her. Um, I'm sure there's been some disappointment, some emotions <laughs> among the players because of what's happened over the past few days. Have you talked to them about that? Oh, or absolutely. How you so we, I'll give you kind of a time uh, timetable on Saturday we met. Uh, we made sure that, uh, that I talked to them, and then we split up uh, positionally, and we talked. Uh, the upperclassmen have gone through it. So that's, that's something that uh, we've had a couple guys go through it three times. So they, they understand it. I, my concern is for the young guys, uh, the young guys that, are, that were part of um, the H-Town takeover and them analyzing it and see it in their face. But I do feel comfortable that it is better uh, you know, after a couple days. Uh, and, and it goes back to our, our leadership. Our leadership has done a great job of explaining to those guys that um, this is how it works. This is the business part of, of but what do you want to get accomplished? And I think it has, um, has kind of got through their brain to say, uh, I'm here for a purpose. What is my purpose? And our purpose in the next three weeks, and, and I, and I kind of tweeted this out, is that, what is our purpose? What is our why? And it's those 16 seniors. And they understand that, and we're going to work our tails off to get them uh, win number 10. Todd, when you talk about the recruiting process with the change and everything that goes out, how do you maintain that in message to recruits that were considering U of H, committed to U of H? How do you kind of keep that ball rolling? Yeah, that's the first thing we did. We sat down as a staff, and I, I told the staff, you're going to see every one of our commitments. And I don't care if you have to stay at school for five hours and stay in their house for four hours. It doesn't matter. There's nobody more important than those committed kids. And... It's the stability part of it. I, I want to make sure that they understand that we're business as usual. We're going to see some different faces in there. I'm not going to wear a grill. I'm not going to dance around. Um, I'm going to be me. But uh, the things that were put in place here, um, there, there's testimony to that. You know, you win 22 games and only lose four, there's a reason for that. And there's a plan in place, and you're coming into this plan, and we can be successful. And it's a very talented group. You, you mentioned that, uh, Todd. How, what do you do to keep that going? I think that's what everybody wants to know. How do you keep this thing going? Oh, it's, it, it's the recruiting part of it and keeping this uh, recruiting class intact. So it, it is just pounding away and having things like this where they can see that we're capable of, of doing at a certain level. And the, the bowl game itself is going to be critical. It's going to be an evaluation. We're all being evaluated. Myself, uh, Coach Applewhite, but every one of those kids is going to take a look at our program and, and, and say to ourselves, hey, have we lost something because uh, we lost a couple people uh, on staff? So it's going to be critical for us to perform. I, I told the kids that. I, I said, hey, listen, you, you want to help this program out if you, if you want to keep this brand the way it is right now? then you've got to practice your tail off. You've got to finish your uh, they have final exams coming up next week. They've got to do an unbelievable job of finishing up strong. And then when we, whatever game they put us in, we've got to play extremely sharp and well. And that will send a message out to all those recruits that um, the, the program is in great shape. Todd, over here, what will it mean to you to be the guy to get the job here at UH? I don't even think of it that way. I, and, and I say this in all sincerity. I, I'm simply looking these kids in the eye. This is where I'm a little bit old school because I've, I've been asked that question before and everybody says, well, it's got to be your motivation to go and want to do this. And I don't even look at it close. I think the people in this room that know me, so all I want to do is make sure that we give them and myself with the organization, give them every opportunity to, to succeed. Because, hey, if it works out, great. If it, if it doesn't, Five, ten years from now, a uh, guy like Tyler McCloskey or you name it, um, G. Ward, five years from now, I want them to look back and say, you know what, that, that guy gave us everything he had. That's it. I, I'm, I'm satisfied when, because you, you don't fool a locker room. You don't. The locker room doesn't lie. And when you do that, I, I'm good with the result. As long as these kids feel like, hey, listen, this guy gave us an advantage. He had us ready. And then whatever happens in the game, I, I'm good with. How difficult will it be, Todd, to get everything together and be able to do what you want to do and get ready for a bowl game with oh, all I, the staff changes, all that stuff? It, it's not. I mean, we've we activated um, five guys to go out in the road recruiting. I was more concerned about the recruiting than I am the football part. 
you know, when it, the, the part about myself is I'm under the roles of the head coach, so I can only go see a guy one time. So now there's a difficulty. I'm, I'm dealing with media. So if we don't trigger uh, five other guys on the road and we're out there with four guys, that's insanity. So the, the organization of recruiting was critical at this point. I don't worry about the football part of it. I don't. Uh, these guys are capable, they're young, they're eager, they're ready to go. And then, like I said beforehand, when you have things in place like we do, the kids understand that they're going to have to pick it up a little bit too and they're going to have to uh, do a great job of, of motivating each other. So the football part, I, it's not a concern to me. The recruiting part to make sure that uh, our competition or the guys going after our recruits, uh, we have enough people out there to, to fend them off. What have you seen as the early reaction from your commitments? Oh, they've been great. I, I think you guys have seen the the, uh, the Band of Brothers um, on, on Twitter. It's been awesome. I've hit them up personally. Everybody has hit them up. Uh, it's, it's been tremendous. They're, they're on board. Uh, like I said beforehand, uh, we're going we're gonna to have them all up there on Saturday. It's going to be fun, uh, and they're going to they're gonna see what we're all about. Todd, I know you won't know your bowl destination until this weekend. Do you have kind of a general outline of what the schedule will be, or guys, I guess do you have to wait for that before you kind of figure no, out? No, Sam, we put all, we put essentially put dates together as if uh, after Christmas, at this time, at this time. So we have three schedules put together. We get 15 opportunities. Uh, we probably won't use all those. But we're ready to go. And I don't know when that is. That's a hunter question. But I uh, normally, from doing this a very long time, Sunday night, uh, be ready for the call or at least Monday morning. So we'll be ready. Uh, whatever date they give us, we, we have a plan for. And how much, uh, I guess, the balance these next couple of weeks, is it, you know, veterans versus maybe getting some young guys, extra, extra reps, things like that? Yeah, uh, the, the practices, the, at least the first three practices coming up on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday will be fundamental. Um, it will be our ones and ones and twos and twos, and I'm, I'm going to give them about anywhere from nine to ten um, horns, so five five minute periods. And then after that, the puppies are going to go in there in full pads and they're going to get after it. So I want to see what we have for the future, see if there's somebody that may be able to help us get those guys. I'm going to do that three days in a row, give them off on Sunday and Monday because I believe we'll find out our destination. I want to give our staff a a chance to game plan and then come back on Tuesday of next week and do a normal practice week, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll probably have another Thursday in there someplace and then probably end up keep doing it again uh, until we find out uh, exactly what the date is. Todd, I'm curious that, you know, there's some coaches, especially on the defensive side, yeah. that have been coordinators where sometimes they don't even entertain the thought of, of becoming a head coach because it would take them away from what they really – love and what they know. I was curious what your feeling is on uh, as you move forward, if you look at uh, your candidacy for, for the head coaching job, how you feel about that in terms of being more the CEO of, of a program and not maybe having your, your hand so much on that. Is it kind of like the, the, um, the, the thing where you would surround yourself with the people, you know, your different coaching staff, stuff like that, where you don't you, necessarily have to be. You lost me, brother. Take <clears> me through it. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm fighting this, this throat you're here. Good. No, no just, just the fact that if, if you were to become a head coach mm -hmm. and you're not so much involved in the day-to-day -day in the room with the, right. the defense coordinator, <clears throat> uh, how, how you would approach that, how you feel about that, considering that's kind of well, been I, your I'm, path. I would say this part, and, and I don't want to make this uh, too much of I'm the head coach uh, talk, but if, 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 if I am the head coach and I will always have – kind of my hand in the defense. I, I think that's just natural. There's going to be people that obviously you're going to trust a lot more guys that you've worked with. And, but to be able to look at a film and when, when you have some expertise at doing something, I, the CEO part of it is important. Managing guys is very important. But making sure that if you have ideas, at the end of the day, you're judged by wins and losses. So I would always be a part of that room. I would always want to have uh, – a chance to give ideas, but I also know that I, I wouldn't micromanage. That's there's one thing that um, that can really make people stagnant and make people not want to work for you is if you're always telling them what to do. So I would give my ideas and and make sure that they understood kind of what I wanted. But it's it's their it's their baby. Todd over here. Um, you mentioned 
previously some of the young coaches that have stepped up and really helped you guys out at this time. Who are those guys and what are some of the things they've contributed? Well, I think uh, C.J. Urban comes to play, and I think, you know, when you look at Derek Wareheim, had a chance to, to be with him. I know our kids respect the heck out of them, and there is some experience in that room. Uh, Roosevelt Majit, uh, working with the defensive line. Our kids love him. He's so fired up. I mean, there's a gigantic uh, smile from ear to ear every time I see him down the hallway with this extra responsibility. And he's got great people to lean on, Cam Malvo, B.J. Singleton, guys that can really help him through the process of, the, of uh, motivating other people. And that's usually what happens when you get younger guys in there. Your vets always help you out. And then James Casey's body of work uh, speaks for itself. I mean, if I'm Tyler McCloskey and I look at that guy, an NFL guy, a guy that can do a, is a dynamic personality and a hardworking guy, I, you know, they're going to listen to that guy. So, uh, like I said beforehand, I don't worry about that. I really don't. If, if these kids are trained like we think they're trained, we're going to be fine because everybody is going is, is gonna to help. Um, the thing I, that I always look at is are we at a disadvantage in some other aspect? And that's why we had to activate these guys to get them on the road. The football parts, uh, to me, th those, those guys will be fine. They're, they're all qualified. The cool thing about it is they're very youthful, so there's going to be a lot of juice out there. Um, they're out to try to impress uh, myself and Major. Uh, they're going to do a great job, and, and I'm excited to watch them go to work. Did you feel the need to give them any kind of motivation or, or encourage them to say that this is their opportunity to shine, or you feel like they already No, they know. That? I mean, in this profession, you know, I, there's a lot of times that um, some of our younger coaches either they, they sit there and they're waiting for their opportunity. They're very talented. But there's a kind of a pecking order that goes into uh, what you can say and not overstepping your bounds. And then when they're let loose, man, it's really cool. It's really cool to watch people get creative and the guys take ownership of, of positions. And um, that's what I see right now. That's what I'm excited about. That, that upstairs uh, is very, very youthful, and they're excited. Todd, I know you said you're, you're not focusing on whether you get the job or not. You're just focusing on what you're doing now. But what did it mean to you that Hunter chose you to lead the program, to be the face right now for the time being? No, I, I, you know, obviously appreciative to him. Um, I hope that the kids understand that how much we're going to work for him. I, I really do. And, and, and maybe Hunter saw that. Uh, you'll have to ask him. I don't want to put words in his mouth. I, I, I know... The, uh, the journey that we've been on. Uh, this two-year journey has been incredible. And it's, regardless of what happens through this, this whole thing, it's our obligation to put the pedal down and give absolutely everything uh, that we have for these kids and for this brand. Th this, is, this is the part of, you know, you, you do this for a living, you make sure that you make it better. And, that, and that's uh, really, really important to me. And, and hopefully those kids understand that that's what we're going to do, and we're talking about a push for whatever it is, you know, four weeks, five weeks, whatever, whenever we line up and we play, but um, we're going to hammer it down. We're going, we're going to do this for these kids. Just personnel-wise, are there any updates on any guys after the game in Memphis? Ed looked like he was still a, a little, you know, dinged up. Is yeah. there any, any change on him? Um, Exactly what you just said. And, and my point to Ed Oliver and, and even to Greg Ward is uh, we'll, we'll monitor their, their practice reps. Uh, you know, Greg's got to make sure that he throws the football to keep his rhythm. Ed, I told Ed, I said, get better. Get rested, get better. Because whoever we play, I want the 100% Ed Oliver. And there's no need. I already know what he can do. on the There's no need to sit there and, and – and say to yourself, go out there and take a thousand reps before this game. We know what Ed can do. So what that timetable is in terms of his recovery, I don't know. It's not a major deal if it's uh, managed correctly and we rest them correctly. And I expect him to be full throttle come bowl game. Ed tweeted out, I'm playing for my city. I'm not going anywhere. Right. What did that mean to you guys? Well, it's important because Sometimes you analyze things and you start to come up with conclusions. And I told our kids to be very careful about social media because sometimes some 
thing that you mean in a certain way gets perceived as something else. But when Ed put that out there, I think it pretty much told everybody that, you know, this is, this is my purpose. And uh, he's been great. Uh, there, there's one thing about that guy is he loves this place. He really does uh, since day one. And I think he's got a little bit chip on his shoulder to say, uh, you know what, I'll carry us a little bit. We're, we're okay. Uh, challenge us and see what happens. And, and that's the real cool part about Ed. Do you get the feeling that, I mean, it's good to get, it'll be good for them to get, it's therapeutic, I guess you could say, to get back on the field for practice, get into a, a game mode with the bowl. Uh, because did you feel like, you know, in the end, the, the kind of the cloud and the constant turning on the TV and hearing speculation about, Tom, did that start wearing on the team any? I, I don't, I can't say that, to be honest with you. Now, if you ask the kid, maybe he tells you something different, but I think I have a really good pulse of the team. I think it is going to be, Joe. I think you're going to, they're going to go out in that field. I, I think the one thing I could see in their eyes when I met with them on Monday was, we're good, coach. Give us a schedule. And I, that's really the sense that I got. My, like I said beforehand with the younger guys, uh, I'm, I'm not so uh, sure about those guys. So we're going to constantly monitor those guys. But those vets, those vets uh, finally said to themselves, we're good. Give us a schedule. Get us organized. Like I said today, they had a great lift. Um, and then we'll get on the practice field on Thursday. And, and I'll be able to answer that question, you know, Thursday after practice. But these kids have battled through a whole bunch of things this year, and they've always responded. They've never let us down. They've always gone at it with a, with a great attitude. And, and like I told them, I don't expect that to change. People, you know, past behavior is future behavior. And what they're doing right now leads me to believe that when we hit, when we hit the practice field, we're going to be okay.